So this is my boy, Devon Lee. I've known Devon for a good couple of years now. I want to say at least four, maybe five years. I first photographed his brother, then met Devon. Uh, Devon's a super charismatic, young, up-and-coming boxer. Uh, he's a professional doing really well now. This is a, a project we worked on down um, in uh, Southern California at the Team Watson Boxing Gym, which was you know, absolutely amazing to work with. This is all shot with video lights because for this one I was directing to a, a short piece and uh, this is actually the key art and motion poster for the project that I did with Devon, which you could uh, see here. Which this is the script that uh, I wrote together with them and this is the picture of his uh, son. I think that uh, um, I make my best work when I'm working on intuition. Not having the, you know, it's always great to plan, but when you could, when you're on set and you're coming up with ideas and you're kind of going with the flow and doing things without overthinking them, I think at least that's when I do my best work. I mean, I could go back all the time and give you a good romantic story on how I came up with the setup, but realistically I can't. I, I knew what I wanted video-wise, and the different lights that we had was the source par in the middle, which is uh, kind of right here. So this is a light right behind them, and that one's a source par light. So uh, source uh, four par, I believe it's called. And uh, that one is a Tuscan light, so it's gonna be naturally 3200 Kelvin on this temperature, and it's gonna provide this kind of warm glow that you kind of see here. And on top of this, well, the reason why I had one of these par lights on there is because I wanted it to be dimming off and on. So the way I wanted this opening scene to go was to go from all black and then that light to kind of dim on and it kind of shows its silhouette. Uh, this is actually a very complex shot for the video that we did. And it kind of started all, all dark with that light dimming and then the light here on the top is uh, my favorite light. Again, you'll hear me use this light over again. This one's a, a Joker. 1600 light and uh, that one is here on the top. That one's daylight balance. They're usually 5600 Kelvin. That's the name of the company, uh, I believe 5600K. But they've been rated, I guess depending on the, on the life cycle of the bulb, but they're usually on the cooler side. Some of them are as cool as 6500 Kelvin, uh, which I absolutely love. So if you shoot around 4000 Kelvin or 3500 Kelvin, you're gonna get you know, this nice blue light right here, which is this one is coming up right here. That's the Joker 1600 and that one's daylight balance. So that's providing all the blue that you see here. This is all being done in camera. And because I want my rim lights to kind of be like nuclear rim lights and I want them to emit, like look, to look as if they're emitting light from my subject, my settings on this one, I was at ISO 400, my f-stop was at 2.8 and my shutter speed was at 1 200th of a second. Uh, and for me personally, the, just the way I, I know myself, I know how I shoot, I try to keep my shutter speed not, not too slow. I know that if I start to go below 200th of a second, I just shake a lot and I'll get camera shakes. So to eliminate that, I like to keep my shutter speed as high as I can on there. So that's what I did on this one. Uh, and I was shooting at 2.8, but I was not wide open on this one because for this shoot, since I was doing video, I was shooting with all prime lenses. I forget which lens I was shooting with this one, but it might have been the 85 1.2 lens from Canon. So I stopped that one, that's a 1.2 wide open, so I stopped it down to 2.8, so it's a little bit, you know, not wide open. I, I'm, like I said, I'm not a fan of shooting with such shallow depth of field. And because those were my settings, that Joker 1600 over there gives you that kind of nuclear rim light on the top. You see the light emitting from here, and from here that's all done naturally to in camera. Because I filled up the boxing gym with haze, and like again, if you, have, if you want to see light rays, you need to have atmosphere, and that's why I added here. And then the other thing that we did on the top is, if those are just two lights backlighting him, the, the, the source par, source four par right here, is uh, backlighting him and providing this yellow glow. And the joker bug on the top is providing this blue glow right here and, and this rim light over here. And on the top, I had a, uh, on the boom, I had a, a 12 by LED light panel. The color temperature was variable on it. 
So we just made it match in the front to Tuscan color. And that's kind of lighting him on the top directly above him. And that's providing the light over here that you kind of see on him. And it provides a nice shadow that casts it here. And then uh, this posing, this just it kind of went into it and we caught it perfectly. You know, later on, I, I tried to recreate this. Uh, literally right after the shot, I loved it. His back right here, I thought I had too much shadow on it. And I wanted to bring another LED light panel to slightly, you know, light the shorts here from underneath and provide more light and kick up. But when we recreated, when we redid it, you know, recreated it with that extra light, the posing wasn't different. It wasn't natural. It was kind of more posing instead of like, you know, what we caught here kind of lighting in the bottle. I ended up going with this one, even though I originally thought it was darker, but I ended up loving how it looked. And then kind of going back to how this lighting setup came to be. I, like I said, I could sit here and spit a romantic story on how, you know, the blues on the top and the yellows on the bottom, because I, I, I do love sunsets more than sunrises, and to me sunsets are more romantic, because it's, you know, like the conclusion of the day, and maybe I was trying to re recreate that, uh, but I wasn't thinking of any of that. Originally, what I told Siraj what I wanted was I wanted, originally, that source par, that glowing light coming from the very top and providing a glow on that rim light over him, and I wanted that glow on the rim light just to be dimming in and out and kind of provide a, just an outline of him from complete darkness. And before we shot this scene, for some reason I just told Siraj, I was like, you know what? Bring that source par down, put it right behind him so he could cast this glow like here behind him and then bring the Joker bug on the top. And what we had to do since HMI lights, the Joker bug can't be, you can't do a hard strike because they, they take 15 minutes to warm up. Uh, what we did is I had a great crew and a great team on this one. It has to be flagged. So the Joker bug was on the whole time. So it's being covered. And then, uh, so the way this shoot started was from complete darkness, the, the, the source part dimming. And then the, uh, it was in sync with the music. And then uh, when like a loud boom came from the music, the, the blue light turned on on the top right here. And the way we were able to instantly turn it on is you just pull that flag down. And it kind of gives you the effect that it's being turned off and on. So those were all, you know, workarounds that we had to do for the lighting that we had. And, and, and again, that was all credit. I got to give credit where credit is due. These were video lights. That was uh, with my gaffer, Siraj. And, uh, you know, I always loved teaming up with him. I always learned so much. That's the lighting breakdown for this image. Also, DTC, Griffin Electric, shout out to the Griff House that I work for. Great people, great crew, big lights.